Good afternoon. My name is Casey and this is Real Life, Real Joy. I am a apostolic homeschooling mother of six. And today I'm going to share with you our curriculum choices for the 2018-2019 school year. I will have my oldest going into seventh grade, he's a boy, and then my second, Rebecca, she will be going into fifth grade. And then I also will have a first grader, a preschool or 4K age, and then we also have a two-year-old and a baby. Um, just to make things fun um, and a little crazy. So our main curriculum is My Father's World. I have used My Father's World from the beginning with Caleb. A friend of mine was, uh, she was also using it, so she let me look through her kindergarten curriculum. And after looking at that and then researching different um, other options, I just decided that My Father's World was the way to go and I am so thankful that I did. I have loved every year. It seems like every year I, I like it better than the one before. Um, I'm always excited to do it. I love the Bible truths that they have woven into it. Um, we're not just doing Bible for Bible. We don't just have one little workbook or one subject that's Bible. We weave Bible throughout everything. It's in our science, it's in our history, it's in, um, sometimes it's even, it's in our language arts. Um, it's just throughout the whole, the whole thing. And I really, really like that. I like that with my father's world, I can teach multiple kids at the same time. So my seventh and fifth grader will be doing it together. And then my first grader will also be doing some things with the bigger kids and then have, he has some things on his own. So this year we are doing the fifth year in my father's world family cycle, which is, uh, 1850 to modern times. This is my shiny brand new teacher's manual. Um, yeah, so this is the fifth year in the history cycle. Next year we will go back and we will repeat uh, the first year that we have already done, but they'll be much older so it'll be a totally different new experience. But I'm very excited. I'm very happy with my father's world. I am a loyal customer. So a lot of this that I'm going to show you is what came in the deluxe package for the 1850 to modern times. And then there's a few things that I have just purchased separately. So this is the teacher's manual. And then I have two packs of student sheets. I put them in a manila envelope or not an envelope, a manila folder. And then in here is just their student sheets. So like there's some timeline pages. There's the one of the state pages. It has lots of information on the back. There's a lot of those. There's a lot of blank uh, pages with stars on them to fill in for the presidents we'll be learning. Looks like a game. I think there's some stickers. There's some state cards in here. So that is what comes with the, um, the student sheets. So each student needs a pack of student sheets. So I have two because Caleb and Rebecca will both be going through this and Joshua is going to only go through it part way. And please forgive me if the camera is a little bit shaky. I am sitting at um, like our old dining room table in our family room, which I do use for school, but it's a, it's a little wobbly and the camera has to be on the table and I have a lot of books to move around. So forgive me if the camera is shaky as I go through all this. So first up, the most important subject to me is Bible. So this book came with My Father's World. It is a young person's guide to knowing God. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this book. It is not an apostolic book. It's just a kind of a non-denominational Christian type book. It's written by Patricia St. John. Now she has written several, um, several like fiction works for kids, which all of her fiction works have been very, very good. So I do love those. Um, I will read this with my kids. So they're going to be doing that. And then... We used to do Bible quizzing um, through our church, but it just got to be a little bit too much. So last year, instead of doing Bible quizzing as part of My Father's World, we memorized the book of James. Well, we as in Caleb and Rebecca. This year, there is not a lot of memory work. So I decided that instead of doing Bible quizzing with, through church, um, that we would memorize the Acts chapter two. There are 47 verses. I'm gonna get some note cards um, that are bound on a spiral at Dollar, Dollar Tree. 
and they'll just write each verse on one note card and then we'll memorize that and I am going to try to memorize it with them also. So that's going to be a big part of our Bible this year. And then I also have this devotional, devotional called Seeds of Jacobin and we'll be doing that occasionally as we see fit. Sorry, I was interrupted by my son so I had to kick him out so I could finish this. So moving on to history. We are in a four year history cycle. So we will be doing um, Story of the World, Volume 4, I believe. Yep, the modern age. So we are covering the year 1850 until um, present day, until modern times. So we have um, this book to read and this giant activity book that goes with Story of the World. A lot of our pages will be coming from here. There's all kinds of map work and activity things in here. This is really big. I doubt we'll do every page in here, but we should be getting uh, many from them. Let's see what else we have. Oh, we have a States and Capitals um, song. It's a CD with songs and a map. So we'll do that. Here's a U.S. history cookbook. We like to cook a lot in this family, and I really, I think it's fun to cook um, cook food from the different countries and places that we learn about as we go. So um, this My Father's World, the 1850 to modern times, it is uh, United States history, but it's also world history. So we're going to cover what's going on in the whole world as well as American history. Um, this is See the USA, a trip through the Nifty 50. This has got just some little extra workbook. Um, not workbook, work worksheets, yeah. Things like there's a crossword puzzle and stuff like that. This is mostly just gonna be some extra, some some review for my, my bigger kids. Something fun. I think it, it actually is part of the second and third grade uh, supplement, which I don't have a second or third grader, but I just thought it looked good. And I think my bigger kids would have fun with it too. So then here we have another huge book that looks really fun. The Children's Encyclopedia of American History give you a quick peek here. What do we have? So it's kind of what it looks like from Smithsonian. That looks very fun. Um, then I have a stack of books that we used last year um, and one we even used the year before. So because we had we did a lot of American history last year, we covered up through 1850. We have a whole stack of books that we've half used and that we will continue to use. So we have Trial and Triumph. This is um, a lot of martyrs and also people that did amazing things for God throughout history. So that book is really good. This is Then Sings My Soul, which is a book about hymns and their origins. So see how we're getting Bible even in our history. And this is an Usborne world history, um, the last 500 years. And then this one's called Exploring, Amer Exploring American History. And lastly, this is In God We Trust. So that is all of our history curriculum books. Oh yes, and I did also get a audiobook called Abraham Lincoln and the Heart of America. So we like to listen to stories in the car. That would be awesome. Then to go along with history and also as reading, we have this stack here of read alouds that we will read aloud. So this one is called Brother Andrew. These are not in any order. They're just the order that I threw them on the shelf. This one is Hudson Taylor. There's Tales of Persia. Courage to Run. This is about Harriet Tubman. I'm excited to read that one. This is Corey Tenboom. Ivan the Informer. Across Five Aprils, which I believe is about the Civil War. And this is Sergeant York and the Great War. I'm pretty sure my son is going to love this one. So that is it for history. Then even this is a little bit more history with uh, music. We have America's favorite patriot, uh, patriotic songs. So here this is our kind of our music study, but also history. And then we also have Sousa. This is Sousa to Sachimo. This is, I believe, a CD about jazz. And then this is the stories of Foster and Sousa. And this is the best of George Gershwin. So we will be listening to some of those. 
And then we also have this God and the History of Art. This is our art for the year. We don't always do every page in it. Um, we started this book. This is act there's actually two books for this. We started this back in the first year of the History Cycle. So this is our fourth year of using this. I don't do everything. There's a lot of art history in it though that we do like to cover and we like to look at the postcards that came with it um, of some different famous uh, paintings and artwork, sculptures, things like that. Sometimes we will do the projects in here, sometimes not. It depends on time and if, if I want the mess of paint and you know, things like that. So I guess we have one more history thing here. This is the timeline book. We have had a timeline up on our wall, which we probably will keep there for now. And so this has all of the timeline uh, pieces from the first history cycles through my father's world. And then the last section is all blank. So we will continue to fill that in this year. So I don't know, I'm not sure how I'm gonna like it all in a binder instead of on the wall. And I'm not really sure where I'm gonna store this big honking thing. So I don't know. I'll give you updates as we try to use that. Yes, this is one of the other thing that was sitting over there. This is just a stack of USA maps with stars by the capitals. Like I said before, we're going to learn the states and the capitals. So I'm sure that will just be for some extra map work. Now we have science. With science, my seventh grader is middle school age, so he needs a little bit harder science as he gets ready for high school. Scary. So he has a different science, and then Rebecca will be doing science with Joshua. So we're using the science that came with 1850 to, uh, to the modern times, but my first grader is actually going to do it with uh, Rebecca. So this is what we have. First up, we have two magnet kits. One of them came in a different year. So they'll be learning about magnets. And then here's the main books here. This world of science which fun has a uh, called a holograph on the front it's kind of fun and then usborne 100 science experiments so joshua and rebecca will do the world of science and this book together and then this is a fun see inside how things work um, i think this is an extra book that i got just for uh, to put in the book basket or a little extra extra fun science stuff. So my fifth grader and first grader will do that together. And then Caleb is in seventh grade and he is doing this exploring creation with general science. This is a middle school course. It looks a little bit daunting. Um, it's set up so that he can do it um, independently. So that's the goal. I know it's not gonna start out independent in the very beginning. So that is the goal. And it also came with a CD. And then I've got My Father's World um, has a lesson plan for it. And this is the tests and solutions. So tests is another new thing for Caleb. And then this is not sold by My Father's World. It is the, um, the notebook. This is, um, yeah, sold by, this is Apologia, I believe. But I bought this at Reading, no, Rainbow Resources. I think it was $28, 2750 or something like that. So this just came highly recommended by several other My Father's World moms on Facebook page. And they say it makes it easier for kids to be independent. And after flipping through it, I think it will help because one thing that Caleb absolutely hates is to write on regular notebook paper. So here he can write right in here. It's more like worksheets where they kind of have the answers. They also have a lab. Yeah, they've got spots for um, lab reports. So he won't have to like create those all by himself, which I think will help him to do it and to be more independent. So that's really good. For the beauty of My Father's World is that you can do it all together with your family. But of course, every kid is not the same on math and language arts. My son is looking through the window. So now I'm gonna show you what each kid is going to do on their own or separately. But I do have, let's see, we do have writing that's together. I switched to IEW, which is Institute for Excellence in Writing. 
Yes, and we switched last year. I did the student writing intensive. We did level B. So we did that last year and I love IEW. So this year I decided to go with one of their theme books. So we went with Following Narnia. Um, this is volume one, The Lion Song. It covers, I think, the first three or maybe four, three and a half books of the Chronicles of Narnia series, which we have been reading this summer. So we just finished book three. So we're gonna finish the rest of the series probably before school starts, and then I'm excited to do this. So this is um, the teacher's manual, and I also have a, one student book, so I will just make copies for Rebecca, which is allowed. That, Caleb and Rebecca, seventh and fifth grade, they are going to do it together. Um, so obviously they will be writing at their own level. Caleb's should be a little bit better, hopefully. That's the goal. And Caleb also has a couple of literature studies. He's going to be doing Across Five Aprils and Shiloh. So these I got um, from Progeny Press. They are on CDs. Um, and that is just like a, a literature study. I haven't opened them up, I haven't looked at them, so I really don't know um, how that's going to be. I'm not sure how my son will like it, but that's what he's doing. For him, he will be doing Applications of Grammar, Book 1, Basics for Communicating Effectively. This is uh, Grammar, so he will be doing that. And then he's also going to be doing Worldly Wise, uh, Book 7. This is the first time we are using Worldly Wise, but I'm excited about it. I'm going to use this actually for spelling as well. Um, so we have not found a good spelling curriculum. I tried Spelling Power and we've used, um, yeah, Spelling Power did not work at all for Caleb. And then we did Rod and Staff, which was okay, but he never remembered it. So he'd fill out the worksheets for a couple days, he'd practice online for a day, and then he'd do a test and he'd still get five or six wrong. Um, which was very frustrating. So we are just gonna do the vocabulary so he can grow his vocabulary and then I will use these words as his spelling list and then I will also make a list of all the words that he misses when he's doing his writing um, in his actual writing curriculum or in his history or science, whatever words that he misspells, I'm gonna keep a running list of that and those will be his spelling words for the week and we will just do the traditional, um, you know, study these words, take a test, whatever you miss goes on the next one. He's just gonna keep doing the same words over and over and over until he finally gets it. All right, then his last separate subject is math. And this is the stack. I feel kind of bad for him, actually. This is Saxon 8-7, it's pre-algebra. Um, he has been using Singapore all the way through from the beginning until now. So he finished 5B, and then he was a little bit weak on fractions, so I had him do Life of Fred fractions book. And then, so now we are going to be starting this. So this is the, um, the student book. It's huge. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. That's the student book. Then we have My Father's World, My Father World, my Father's World's uh, lesson plans. It came with a CD also. I believe this has the lessons on them, but it's like a, I think it's like a chalkboard. It's just showing you how to do it. It's not an actual person. Then he has a test book, and then here is a solutions manual for me. So I will update you on what I think about Saxon Math once we go. I've heard it's a lot of problems which I know Caleb's not gonna like, so we will see. So, seventh grade, it's a year to get a little bit more independent, so he has his own science and a different, a new math curriculum that's a little bit harder. So because of that, I decided we're actually gonna start school, or when we start school, for the very first week, all we're gonna do is math for all kids, and then Caleb will do his science. So he gets a week of kind of figuring it out, seeing what, it's gonna take and what he needs to do every week. Um, and then the second week of school, we will start everything else. So we're kind of doing a soft start or a trial week just to see. So we're gonna start math and science and we'll see how that goes. Now for Rebecca, she, for language arts, she is going to do this. It is 
Lingua Mater Intermediate Language Lessons by Emma Searle, uh, Hillside Education. I was using My Father's World. Um, they put out language lessons for today. And they started writing it right when Caleb uh, was using it. So he, I think he did second, third, and fourth grade. And when he finished fourth grade's language lessons for today, My Father's World had not written fifth or sixth yet. Um, so they actually took a year off of writing that. I think they were like doing a preschool curriculum or something that year. So they didn't continue, which was very frustrating. So we went with this. This is an upgrade, an updated version of uh, intermediate language lessons, which is an old uh, language curriculum that you can get. I don't love, love, love this, but it's what we have. It's what works. Um, I would like to switch back to My Father's World, but couldn't quite justify uh, paying for it when we already have this. So this book covers fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. So Rebecca will be doing the two, the second part and the third part probably for sixth grade. So that is hers. And then she's also going to be switching to Worldly Wise. Rebecca is a natural speller, so it was kind of silly for her to fill out a spelling workbook and get 100% on the test every single time and just, it wasn't challenging at all. So she's also going to do Worldly Wise, she's going to do book five. And then I will also keep a tab a sheet of her misspelled words. Um, and then they can just practice the words that they, um, that they don't already know. So now for math, Rebecca is still in Singapore. She is going to do Singapore 4B and she'll also do 5A. And she may even get to 5B, I don't know. She likes doing math a lot, so we'll see. All right, that is everything I have for Caleb and Rebecca, that's seventh and fifth grade. Now, Joshua is first grade. He actually already started first grade. He has done nine weeks of My Father's World first grade. He started in March. And the reason is because before he was in kindergarten, he turned five in January, and he was so excited to start school, he wanted to do school with the big kids every day. I was getting those dollar store workbooks and he would fill, he would do an entire workbook in one day. And so since I already had purchased the curriculum, I just decided, you know what, we're just gonna start. So we started kindergarten in February or March of his kindergarten. Uh, actually it was, it would have been like his preschool year. Um, so he, he started it then and we went kind of slow. I didn't, never pushed him and he, he kept going. And then when we got to about February, I ordered all of our new curriculum that you see, everything that I saw, and he saw his math book, which is this, this complete book of math. This is grades one and two. He wanted to do this so bad, he finished up the last couple weeks of kindergarten like as fast as he could. I think we did a week in like two days. Just to finish it, he wanted to get it done, and he wanted to start first grade. So he started in March. So my plan is to continue with My Father's World First Grade. So here's the teacher's manual for uh, My Father's World First Grade. It's called Learning God's Story. And then he's got a um, student book. As you can see there he already has done several pages. Here's kind of just a picture of what it looks like. So he has done nine weeks. So my plan is to just have him we're gonna pick up, we'll probably um, go through his workbook, we'll probably go through every phonics page through the workbook and review for at least one or two days. And then we'll just pick right back up where we left off and he'll start week 10. And because he's starting in week 10, I know that he's gonna finish first grade before the rest of the kids are finished with their school year. So my plan is just to have him read a lot We'll practice reading. First grade is the year that you practice or that you learn to read. So he will just practice reading. We will, we always go to the library. I'll make sure I have him read to me every day and he'll have some silent reading time every day. But like I said, he will continue to do science with Rebecca and he, he always listens into our history. So he'll listen to the history books. He'll listen to um, what the big kids are doing. He listens to our Bible stuff. So I'm not concerned about him finishing uh, first grade a little early. And then he will just start second grade when everyone else starts. And when we start with second grade, then my second grader, then I'll have a sixth grader and an eighth grader and they'll all be together. So this is one thing that I love about My Father's World is this 
Bible Reader. They do a wonderful job with the Bible Reader. I love that my kids are learning to read using the Bible. Um, yeah. I'm just going to show you. So this is the first page of the Bible Reader. See how big the type is? How they're spaced out. There's not a ton of words. Um, this is something that I, I never would have thought about uh, to do, but they start out the the book with large words, big print. You actually start out studying all the words before you even like read them on here. And then as we go, we'll just take kind of a big flip. Here's the page. You see there's much more words on this page, and the, the type is a little bit smaller. And then as we go, well, that's the beginning of the New Testament. Okay, here's another one that's further along. There's even more words, and it's a little bit smaller yet. And then as we get near, let's see, the back. Here's one. So now we're reading, it's almost like a real book. The pages, or yeah, the words are smaller. There's many, many more words, and they are reading really great. So they, he re will read this once, once we get to that week, I'm not sure what week it is, he'll start reading in his Bible reader, and then the same day he'll do a Bible notebook, which I don't have because I need to purchase the notebook. Um, it'll, it's one of those books where they're, it's blank on the top for a picture, and then there's some lines, uh, lar the larger like kindergarten lines for some writing on the bottom. So he'll kind of write a summary. And again, My Father's World recommends in the, the first few times you just write like a title to your picture and then you can write like one sentence and then you you build until you're writing an actual summary that might be three sentences long which is quite a feat for a first grader um the last thing he has is he does have a devotion book which we will do but we will just do this as as we have time when i teach first grade i also have a four-year-old and a two-year-old and now a baby that will be all behind me and around everywhere making a mess and playing and being loud. So we do things as we can get to them with first grade. Now Matthew is only four, so he would be 4K. And I did find this one little book for him. Um, this is a coloring book. I bought this at an Amish, um, like a country store. They had a few other Rod and Staff books. I thought this was Rod and Staff, but as I'm looking on it, I don't think it is. It says YBS and Company. So I have no idea where to get this. I paid $1.70 for it. I really, really like it. It looks like this. So there's a large letter that he can color, maybe trace with his finger, and then he can practice writing a couple on each line. And there's a coloring thing. And it's like that for every letter. And then there's a couple of numbers at the back. Ah, my battery died just as I was trying to just sign off and say goodbye. So if you have any questions about My Father's World or uh, homeschooling or anything else, anything you'd like to know about my family, go ahead and leave them in the, in the comments below. I would love to chat with you. I would love to hear from you. And if you would like to see more or hear more about um, our homeschooling journey, our homeschooling life, then please go ahead and subscribe.